All right, the four things I wish I knew before starting as an SDR six years ago. This would have saved me a lot of trial and error and a lot of lessons learned the hard way. And during my two years as an SDR manager, these were the four things I constantly had to coach reps on that I wish I was taught when I was new. So let's get into it. All right, the first is the concept of ebbs and flows because as an SDR, your success is literally going to ebb and flow. It's not going to happen linearly in a straight line. And I'm not even talking about when you're brand new. I'm talking about when you're a few months in role and you hopefully have some of the stuff down, like how to cold call, how to email, how to structure your day. Your success is not gonna happen linearly. For example, if your target is five meetings a week, that does not mean you're gonna do all the right things and book one meeting per day every day like clockwork and get to five that week and then the next week have the same thing happen, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, one meeting a week till you get five. You're gonna have weeks where you book eight meetings that week and then the next week you might even work harder than the previous week and only book one or two meetings that's what i mean by the concept of ebbs and flows and i always tell reps when it's hot it's hot and when it's cold it's cold and the reason i tell them this is because a lot of reps get really down on themselves when they're doing all the right things they meet with me and over the past two weeks they're telling me what they did they're doing all the right things they don't have any meetings to show for it or they're drastically under underperforming their expectations. And I always have to remind them, as long as you're focused on the inputs, the outputs will come. Yes, let's make sure we're doing the right inputs. Inputs would be anything like interactions. How many calls are you making? How many emails are you making? Because without getting any better at cold calling, if you just go from structuring your day to making 50 cold calls a day to 75 cold calls a day, your expected value in terms of meeting set is going to increase just from that. Never mind if you actually get better at cold calling. So focus on the inputs, the outputs will come. Focus on the inputs and trust the outputs. And I think you have to evaluate monthly, not daily, maybe bi-weekly. Daily is definitely not enough. Even weekly is definitely not enough time to have passed to be judging whether you had a successful week or an unsuccessful week. Every month, I think you should sit down because that's enough time for the variance to ride out. Enough time to have a large enough sample size of cold emails, cold calls, the meetings you set. Are they turning to qualified opportunities? Are you setting meetings with the right personas and the right contacts and actually delivering value and working with your rep to do that? This is an important mindset to keep in mind. And I don't even think this is just for the SDR role. I think this is in your account executive role and beyond. Your success is not going to be linear. You can't get too high when things are going well and you can't get too down on yourself when things aren't going well. Yes, if things aren't going well over an extended period of time, I think you need to start focusing on the inputs and thinking about what changes you should be making. But if you're doing the right things, don't get too caught up in the short term. Your success is gonna ebb and flow. So just know that going into the role. The next lesson I wish I learned was the importance of practicing behind the scenes. And I'm talking about things like your cold call script and handling the most common objections. I don't see many reps at all practicing this stuff, literally just setting five minutes a day or 10 minutes a day aside to run through your script so that it, you have it down like that. So when the prospect says hello on the phone, you know exactly what to do. You've literally, it's almost muscle memory coming out of your mouth. Your only experience and practice should not just be on live calls because on live calls, especially when you're new, you don't really have the capacity to even analyze what's going on. You haven't built up enough experience yet. An analogy I'd use is think about if you're trying to become a good three-point shooter in basketball, for example, your only practice should not be in-game shooting three-pointers. This makes sense for almost any other part of life. You have to practice off the court in order to feel good when you're on the court. Then when you get the ball on the three-point line in that spot you've practiced a thousand times, it's literally muscle memory. So you need to have your scripts and how you handle objections down like muscle memory so that you just know what to do when these situations arise on calls. Once I sat down for five minutes a day and started practicing my script, that is what helped me develop the confidence on the phone. It helped my tone. It helped that downward inflection. I was more crisp. I wasn't stuttering over my words. And these are little small, little percentage improvements that make all the difference on cold calls and how I felt. It also helped me pick up the phone more because I felt confident and knew it was gonna happen. So practice behind the scenes. I don't see reps doing this and it's an important concept to know going into the role. Next, this is something I waited way too long in my SDR role to start practicing. I was probably nine, 10 months in before I even started trying to do this on my own. And that's starting to run some of the calls that you set up. So I'll preface this by saying, I get it. You often 
often get paid on the meetings you set and whether they turn to qualified opportunities. So if you set a meeting with a really good persona, you really want that meeting to go well. Yes, it's understandable to want your account executive or someone that has a lot more experience to run the call to make sure that meeting goes well. But sometimes you, we set these calls that we know, hmm, this is a pretty low level title. I don't even know if it's the right person. They just agreed to take the meeting. Those are good ones to practice on your own. Ideally, your AE joins the call with you and gives you a little guidance and tells you how you did afterwards and gives you feedback. You should also record your call so you should listen to yourself and be like, would I buy from me or would I take a next step from me or set another meeting with me based on how I perform? It's really comfortable to just do your little intro, set the meeting, pass it off to the AE and then check out and cross your fingers and hope that they give you an opportunity for it. But at the first, especially when you're brand new and aren't comfortable running, Running calls, you want to observe how your account executives are running calls because they're where you want to be. They often have many, many years of experience. How are they kicking off the calls? How are they setting agenda? How are they going about getting next steps? What types of questions are they asking? You literally want to start writing this stuff down and then trying it on your own on some of your own calls. You want to be staying engaged in as many cycles as you can too. So don't just set that intro call. The AE gives you the opportunity and you're like, oh, I'm done. I don't really care what happens from here. For at least a few of your opportunities, you want to stay engaged in the cycle so that you can see how a full sales cycle works so that when you get to that account executive role, you actually know what the process looks like. And then the last concept to keep in mind is that the SDR role is not a race. This is a foundational role meant to build your skill set so that you can succeed as an account executive and progress in your career. I get that when you get out of training, you want to be that rep that comes out hot. You've probably read all the books. You're on channels like this that are pretty small. You're probably pretty ambitious if you're on a channel like this and you think you're doing more than the average rep that's in your training program and you want to come out hot. But a lot of what happens in those first few months is out of your control. And a lot of the stuff you trained for it's not the same when you actually get that person live on a cold call. You can read all the book, you can read the challenger sale, you can practice those cold call scripts, but there's just some things you can't train for until you get on the job. So don't worry so much about your performance. Again, focus on the inputs, focus on little things like, are you making more cold calls each day than the week before? Are you making more emails each day than the week before? As long as those inputs are going up and you're practicing and working behind the scenes and getting better and learning from the reps who are at where you want to be in your org and learning from your account executives, the results will catch up. In two, three years from now, when you're a successful AE, because you built that skill set as an SDR, you're not even going to remember those first couple months where things were a struggle. That's going to seem like a blip. So keep the end goal in mind and get the reps in. As long as you're getting the reps in and focusing on the inputs, the skill set will catch up and your results will accelerate. When I was a new SDR, I wanted to be that rep so bad that came out hot. That was a natural, but that's not the case. I worked hard in the trainings. I was doing all the right things. I read the books. I was showing up early and staying late. And I was the last person on my team to actually book a meeting with a prospect. I practically had to beg the guy. I don't even know how he took a meeting with me, but I begged the guy and he did. And I was the last person to actually get one. But six years later, I can barely remember that. That was just part of the struggle. And then it clicked like three, four months in and the results accelerate because I was focusing on the inputs and keeping the end goal in mind. So hope this got you thinking. If it did hit the like button and I'll see you on the next one.